Hello, it's Melody. Welcome to A Saner Spin, episode 28. This week I'm here with my husband, Matthew. Say hello, Matthew. Hello, everyone. Uh, the reason we're here together is because we wanted to talk about the Depression and Bipolar Support Alliance's I'm Here campaign. I have spoken about DBSA before. You can look at last week's episode to learn a little bit more about their support groups, uh, which, as I mentioned last time, helped save my life uh, to, in no small part. So that said, this campaign is about spreading awareness and starting a conversation about what it's like to live with a mood disorder, but also what it's like uh, to love somebody and show support for somebody who's living with a mood disorder, which is why Matthew is here. Uh, part of how you can show your support for the campaign, we're wearing these pins. Uh, you can order a kit to get this pin online, or you can, I mean, it's a safety pin with green beads on it, so you can also make your own. Uh, and if you want to order it, I'll put a link to uh, how you can do that down below. Uh, you can also take a picture of yourself and uh, with the pin and use the hashtag I'm here DBSA to share it on social media to show that you are supportive and know or love somebody or live with a mood disorder. Um, that's part of what you can do. There's also an anonymous survey that you can take online. Again, I will link to that below. Um, basically, in the survey itself, there are two questions uh, that I thought it was worth addressing this week, which is why, again, he is here, because one of those questions, uh, he is much more qualified to answer than I am. Uh, and the whole idea of this campaign, and I love the what they called it, I'm here, is about what you can do to be more supportive for somebody who is living with a mood disorder and you're someone you love. Uh, and for me, the huge thing that you can do is to be there. There are no rules in terms of what's right to say or wrong to say. T to me, it's more about just being yourself uh, and showing up again and again and again. Uh, and a lot of people, when you get sick, uh, any kind of sick, I've experienced other kinds of illness, uh, people tend to sort of fall off the face of the earth, uh, which is totally fine because it's an easy way to learn who your real friends are. Uh, but when it comes to any sort of psychiatric issues, I think it's even worse. So uh, if you are one of those people who doesn't get scared and doesn't fall off the face of the earth, that in and of itself, just being there is huge. Uh, in terms of what would make it easier to show support for someone in your life who's living with a mood disorder, that's what I think you're much more qualified uh, to answer and what made it easier for you as somebody who was trying to be supportive of me. Uh, after I was diagnosed in particular with bipolar disorder, uh, what was most helpful for you? Well, when you were exhibiting signs of mania and psychosis, I had no idea what I was looking at. I had no idea what I was seeing. Neither did I, by the way. Neither did you. And so the best thing that I could do for myself was to try and understand what was going on. And I did that through reading, ordering books online, um, talking to people, some friends and family members who were doctors and trying to understand what was going on. Um, and then also attending these DBSA meetings with Melody that she mentioned, they were incredibly helpful. Um, they showed us that we were not alone and there were there was a whole network, a whole community of folks um, who were with you in this experience and willing to share their experiences as well. And so it kind of felt like a family. Um, and then, you know, finally just be there. Um, don't, you know, don't, don't, don't bail. Don't bail and <laughs> Stick around for the long haul, and it just gets easier each and every day. Right. Uh, I think what happened to me after I was first diagnosed, and it took that acute manic episode to get diagnosed, and I haven't had one since because at the time I didn't know what it was, and I didn't wasn't treated for anything. Uh, but with treatment, I have been well for um, like seven years now. So I've been in recovery. I still struggle with this illness every day. Uh, but uh, things have just gotten better, I would say. Uh and as I, I wrote about this in Hal Dahl and Hyacinth's my memoir, uh, which you can get on the interwebs or at your local independent bookstore, right? Mm -hmm. Ideally at your local independent bookstore. If you haven't read it, but if you have, then you know that after I came out of the hospital, I, I was sick of myself. I really would, if I could have left myself, I would have left myself. I was, I felt very fragile and weak and embarrassed. And I told Matthew, uh, you know, you didn't sign up for this, uh, I wouldn't blame you at all if you wanted to leave. And what was your response? 
you were crazy <laughs> since the day I met you. Yeah. yeah. I knew you were crazy yeah. from day one, right? Kind of an awesome thing to say. I, I honestly, it reminded me that I was still the same person. Uh, and having somebody on the outside to look look at me and say, no, you're, you're still that same person uh, who I fell in love with, that was huge. Uh, so thanks for that. No problem. Uh, that said, uh, I think I think we're finished. I'll put all those links I mentioned below. Uh, and props to DBSA for doing this. And we'll take a picture of ourselves, right? And yeah. we'll put it on the interwebs, on the Twitter and the Facebook. And all that's that. all I do. 